Hello everybody, I am Trey, also known as Spinning Plum Bobs, uh, here on YouTube and over on Twitter, my Patreon, patreon.com slash spinning plum bobs. And uh, today we're going to go over the Expanded Mermaids mod that just released for uh, my patrons for early release, and the public release is going to be on March 1st. We're just going to be going over the main points of this mod today and what you can do with it and what it brings to the game. So uh, without further ado, we're gonna just hop into our lot and let's get started. All right, so we are loaded into the lot now and we've got our uh, test sims here that are gonna be showing us the elements of the mod today. You might recognize them from the trailer that came out last week. We have Maya Ocean and we have Aaron Maritime. What I wanna go through first is the basics and show you guys what you can do with the ocean here. So if we go over to Aaron, if you click on the ocean, you can see that he can scuba dive, but he does need to buy a rebreather like you do with basic scuba diving in the game. But this interaction you can actually do anywhere in Sulani and in Tartosa. So you'll be able to scuba dive and that'll give you different outcomes and different little text pop-ups that'll come up over here. It'll give you different items that'll be helpful for making recipes or advancing your mermaid mythology skill, which we'll get to in a second. But you can also snorkel, which you can do in any body of water apart from pools. So that will also give you different outcomes and items and whatnot. You can also see here, if you click a little bit closer to the shore, that you can collect seawater. And that's going to be something helpful for sea witches, for their potions, or for mermaid mythology, making some certain recipes that you can learn. But for mermaids, uh, these are your options. Some of these were available in the original version of the mod, such as dive underwater and dive deeper and so on. Uh, but there are some new ones like search for ambergris, which is a different collectible that will be helpful for making certain recipes. But with these interactions that were available before, they have been updated, so there are some new outcomes, there are some new text pop-ups that you'll get up here, there are some new collectibles that you can find that will be helpful in advancing mermaid mythology as well. With Dive for Kelp, that has also been updated, so now there are five different types of kelp that you can find. Four of them are just regular edible kelps that have different varying amounts of hunger you get from them. And there's one that's extra special because it will give you special abilities. We'll get to that a little later, but mermaids can also eat raw fish in this new update. So that's something else that they can consume. But for now, we're going to bring Maya out here. You might be familiar with these piles of floating junk that you can see out in this area in the ocean here. And before you could just clean them up, but mermaids now can actually search for human stuff. So they will be able to swim up and they'll start digging through this trash and just kind of uh, trying to see what they can find. And eventually they'll be able to find these little items. And you can see that she has found a dingle hopper. With all of these items that they can find, these human collectibles, they all have different interactions like brushing your hair with the dingle hopper or there's like a candelabra that you can place on a surface and light like a regular candle. So they're all decorative, but they have these special interactions. So now we're gonna go back over to Aaron here. And as you can see in his inventory, he has some special books. And these are the mermaid mythology books that you may recognize from my original mermaid mod that came out even before Island Living. So those have been brought back for this update. So these books go along with the mermaid mythology skill that you can see here. That's a 10 level skill. And uh, with it, you'll be able to learn some different recipes, like things that involve ambergris or maybe some perfume, things like that. And those recipes can be crafted at the bar or at a stove, depending on which recipe you're making. So for the sake of the video, we're going to have him craft this little drink that uh, requires bottled seawater, lemon, and wakame, which is a different type of kelp that you can find. So we're gonna have him go ahead and do that. So while he's doing that, uh, I wanna say that you can actually buy these books in build buy mode, or you can buy them on a computer. And building the mermaid mythology skill will give you some extra social interactions. And I'll let you explore that yourself with your own gameplay, but for now we'll let him take a drink of that. There's a few drinks. There's a salve for mermaids who have certain powers that's helpful to them. So now that he's had a nice little beverage and he's feeling a little bit better, I'm gonna go ahead and have him research this strange seaweed. He found this earlier when he was snorkeling and uh, he's interested in it. So he's gonna look in the book and try to figure out what that's all about. So you can see that he's learned that the seaweed is called gillyweed and it has some special properties. So we're gonna go ahead and have him eat it and see what happens.
And as you can see, he's developed some interesting attributes, some gills and some flippers. And uh, if you eat more than one, you'll find that that progresses even further and some new developments happen, but we're gonna have him swim out here to show you what effect that has had. So from consuming that kelp, he now uh, has a little bit of a different swim style. And you can see he can dive for kelp and dive underwater and do some of the interactions that other sea creatures can do. Uh, he can now search for gillyweed after he has learned what it is from the book. It unlocks that interaction. Now we wanna go over the mermaid rank and perk system that I have implemented with this mod. So you can see over here, she's got her mermaid rank, which is a five level skill. And that is going to unlock different perks that you can gain. You can see that since she's swimming right now in her mermaid form, she's gaining that skill as well as her mermaid XP, which is a different skill. It's a three level skill that's similar to my werewolf mod. This will determine when you can unlock perks. So rank controls what powers you can get. XP determines when you can get them. So for the sake of the video, we're gonna go ahead and level her up to level three mermaid XP. And you can see that she's gotten this pop-up letting her know that she is ready to select a perk. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. So once you have full mermaid XP, you go to her mermaid menu, go to perks, select perk, and you have the option to choose one of these abilities. You can see that there's hydrokinesis, so control over water. There's cryokinesis, control over ice and cold thermokinesis, uh, control over heat, and then there's a little bit more simple ones, like being able to collect a large amount of kelp at once, gaining more energy by sleeping in the ocean. There's more advanced ones like Siren Voice, which affects all singing interactions and uh, will add an extra effect to them. And then when you get high enough in your mermaid rank, you might be able to drown sims or choose to save them and be benevolent. So it is up to you. But for right now, we're going to go ahead and give her thermokinesis. So you can see she's gained that ability and she'll be able to evaporate water and she'll be able to heat other sims up to make them uncomfortable. She'll be able to thaw sims if they're frozen. And you can see here she'll be able to evaporate herself or other mer people if they're stuck with their tail out on land. And that's another little thing that we'll get to in a bit. But aside from perks, you can also develop weaknesses. These can develop randomly during gameplay. So when you're doing certain interactions, if you have certain traits, you might be more likely to get certain weaknesses. But if you don't want to develop those randomly, I have added a ton of cheats to this mod, uh, one of them being disabling random weaknesses. So if you don't want your mermaids to just randomly get these hindrances, you can turn them off and back on and that's individual to each sim so you can pick and choose which ones you want to do that for or you can go ahead and select a weakness directly with these cheats so you have several options you have call of the sea which is where mermaids will get sad if they're away from the ocean for too long you've got harpy voice which will give them a terrible dissonant voice and mess up their siren songs there's moon spell which you may have seen in the trailer and there's my favorite uh, which is sensitive scales and that makes mermaids a little bit more sensitive to contact with water so if they're washing their hands too frequently if they're taking a shower if they're exposed to water in any way they will have the chance of developing their tail and be stuck that way for a while so we're gonna go ahead and give her that and see how that affects her. And you can see she's not too happy about it and you'll get a little pop-up explaining what that does. So since Maya has the sensitive scales weakness, let's say she's walking through the park and happens to go by an active sprinkler. Let's see what happens when she does that. And clearly she has had a little bit of an issue there. So she has fallen and has her tail out on land, you may remember that she has the thermokinesis ability, so she can just evaporate herself. She'll be able to use her powers to dry off really quickly, and that takes care of that. And that even leveled up her XP, which you can see there. So now we're going to come down to our sea witch in his little cavern here. You might recognize him as well from the trailer. I'm going to have him come to his cauldron here and practice brewing potions. So one thing that sea witches can do now that has been added with this update is they can brew potions of different varieties, which you learn by practicing or uh, once you reach level three of the sea sorcery skill, they will be able to go to their grimoire and they'll be able to search for potion recipes. So this is actually one of the objects you can find while diving deeper in Sulani or Tartosa. Once you get it, if you're not a sea witch already, you'll be able to examine it and learn how to become a sea witch. 
So once you start practicing brewing potions, uh, you will eventually start learning different recipes that you can make. So you can see that he has learned the bottled Davy Jones curse, which is one of my favorite potions. And uh, you might notice you can go to the notebook and this is where you'll be able to see the different recipes and uh, what they do. So if you look here, bottled Davy Jones curse requires a wolf eel, one brimstone, and one mazella kelp, which is a different variety of kelp that you can find as well. Brimstone is actually found in the sulfur piles near the volcano on the island. So if you click on those, you'll be able to collect the sulfur and that will end up being brimstone in your inventory. So here's a closer look at the cauldron object. There are several different color variations that you can choose from. So you can find that in the study section. If you go to hobbies and activities, it should be listed there, or obviously you can search for it in the search bar. And as well, there is the mermaid mythology book in all of the variations, as well as potions, something else that has been added with this update is the ability to craft contracts. So we're gonna have him do that and you'll see that he suspends it over the cauldron. And if you wait just a moment, it'll pop up and you'll be able to make some selections. So now he can decide the time limit. And this is how long the Sim has to pay the Sea Witch back after completing this contract. So you can choose 24 hours, three days, or a week. For the sake of this, we'll just go ahead and say three days. You can choose the spell that is done or potion. So you can see you have several options here and your sea witch has to know the spell or potion that is required for these before they start the fulfillment process. And for the sake of the video, we'll just say Poseidon's luck charm. And here you choose the payment. So this is what the sim will have to give you in return for this magical contract that you've put together for them. So you can choose one of these monetary options, these different amounts of money, or you can choose love, which will take the Sim's ability to love and form romantic relationships. You can choose soul, which is where the Sim will have to give you the urn of a deceased Sim. You can choose voice, which will take their ability to speak and uh, affect their interactions with people. Or you can take their youth, which will immediately age them up. So we'll go ahead and choose voice Aww. here. So after he's done crafting that, he'll collect it and it ends up in your inventory where you can see the different terms listed. So the payment is voice, time limit three days, magic, Poseidon's luck charm. So that's uh, a way for you to keep track of all these different contracts and whatnot. And if we look over here, uh, Maya has signed this contract and you'll notice that service completed is there, which means that we've already done the magic required for this contract and we are awaiting payment, which means we have not collected the payment from her. The payment is soul. So she needs to give him the urn of a deceased sim. So since we're awaiting payment already, we might as well take care of that. So if you click on the contract and select collect payment, he will go over and get that from her. Now Floki Cryptic. And then we're able to select the different urns that are in her inventory. Or if you have the Fairies vs. Witches mod, which is also available on my Patreon, you can give a life essence. So uh, we're going to go ahead and just select the Spellcaster Tombstone. And he collects the soul and you can see it's here in his inventory and he can actually do some interesting stuff with this little moon shell one of which is use it on a ghost and there you have it so he has resurrected his friend by using the soul that he collected from Maya. So that's just one example of the way that you can take those payments and use it to your benefit. There's also a shell for the Sims youth, for their love, for their voice. Uh, so there's different things you can do with those as well. However, as my favorite sea witch says, you can't get something for nothing. So we're gonna have to brew something up. So Gresham is gonna start throwing in his ingredients and mixing up this potion. And now we have the bottled Davy Jones curse. And this is gonna stay in the cauldron until you collect it. So we're gonna have him bottle up that potion. Ah, and now that it's in his inventory, he can take it and throw it at Wade. Oh. 
And now Wade has transformed into this hideous, green, smelly creature from the ocean. And you'll see that he has a buff now that says Davy Jones Curse and gives a little bit of background on that. Let's say you have a contract that's already been drafted and you want to have someone sign it. Gresham is going to suspend the contract over the cauldron. And now you're going to click the cauldron, hit present contract to, and select whoever you want uh, if they meet the criteria of the contract. And then he's going to present it in a very dramatic fashion. And Aaron is going to give it a read and just see if he uh, wants to commit to these terms. And of course he does, so he's going to give it a sign and uh, agree to the contract. So as you can see, now that he has signed the contract, uh, you get this pop-up explaining what you can do next. Uh, to initiate the fulfillment of the contract, Gresham needs to suspend it over his cauldron again and select initiate contract fulfillment. So we're going to go ahead and do that. So once the contract is over the cauldron, if you hover over, you can see that these details are listed again, uh, but you can see it's signed by Aaron Maritime. So no matter what happens, you'll be able to see these stats and be able to keep track of your contracts and the status of them. But for right now, we're going to select initiate contract fulfillment. So now we have a little event started and up here, cast Poseidon's luck charm on the beneficiary is listed. So that just tells you that that's the spell you need to use. So once you do that, the event will complete and you will have fulfilled the contract. And now the event has ended and was successful. So now we can move on to the uh, contract payment. So let's say for the sake of argument that Aaron has let some time pass and his three days are up and he has not paid back the sea witch. Let's see what happens when he does that. You'll get a little pop-up that says that he's neglected to repay the sea witch and uh, the sea witch will also get a notification saying that Aaron has not paid. And once you're notified of that, you can select the contract between the two of you and there will be a new option to enforce consequences. And you can select from these different options. Certain ones are disabled for like, for instance, money being taken from someone in your household and uh, giving a mermaid weakness if the signer is not a mermaid. So that's one way that you can get a weakness if you have a mermaid sim. Uh, you can lose skills, you can lose your emotions, you can be given Davy Jones curse. So let's go ahead and select lose skills. So now he has no more skills uh, and they are completely gone. So that's his punishment. So then if we look at the contract again, it is completed and everything is taken care of. So now we can disperse that contract and it'll ask if you're sure so that you're not accidentally destroying a contract. And one thing to mention is that you cannot be involved in multiple Sea Witch contracts. So if you're the beneficiary of a contract, you can only be part of one at a time. So if you are a normal sim and you don't want to go down the route of becoming a Sea Witch and doing all of that stuff, but you still want to be able to form a contract and use that system, you will be able to use the cheats that are included in this mod to select the Sea Witch and use Turn Into NPC Sea Witch. This will not affect your ability to control the sim if they're in your household. It's mainly for uh, just maxing out all of the skills and giving them all of the stats they need if you're making a sea witch uh, that you don't necessarily want to play with. So now he has mastered the sea sorcery skill among other things. You may notice uh, that he doesn't have any ingredients to make any of these potions, uh, but you will also notice that he has this interaction right here that is uh, for ingredient conjuration. That's a spell he learned from this Poseidon's Grimoire. You can learn uh, different spells through this menu. And now that Gresham is an NPC Sea Witch, he is now available to purchase ingredients. So uh, we're going to have Aaron purchase these ingredients. Let's go ahead and get some of that. One of those or a couple of those. Uh, we'll get one of those and let's do one of those these and yeah and now he has some ingredients to make a potion if he wanted to 
Next, we're going to go over some of the Kelpie improvements that are with this update. There is this special little bit of kelp here that you can also find while diving deeper in Sulani and Tortosa. And now he is transformed into one of our new and improved Kelpies. So now they've been given a more attractive appearance that resembles the base sim more. And if you click on him, you can go to his Kelpie menu, Kelpie form, and you can change the color. So let's just give him this one real quick. And that changes it to a lovely blue if you would like. There are also a couple more options like showing hair in Kelpie form and hiding these shark teeth that they end up with if you want to have just normal sim teeth. And unfortunately certain hairs are not compatible with the show hair option. It will cross over the textures and not look very nice. So uh, it just depends on which hair you're using so keep that in mind. Another new addition for Kelpies in this update is the ability to control their transformation with this small hidden skill. And this skill is gained by transforming at will but uh, we're going to just hop on in and go to the cheats and use this boost transformation control and you'll see you get a pop-up that says Aaron has gained some control over his Kelpie form his shape-shifting power will now decrease at a slower rate let's just do it again and see what we get so now it says Aaron has gained the ability to transform at will any time of the day so not just at night and there's a few different levels eventually you'll get to the point where you won't transform against your will at all shape-shifting power won't decrease whatsoever unless they are uncomfortable or in a negative mood and the last little thing that you can do with Kelpies is you now have the option to ask for their scales. This is specifically going to be helpful for witches because there are a couple potions that use Kelpie scales. You have to have a good relationship with them otherwise they are not going to want to give you little bits off their body as you would expect. But that is all of the improvements for Kelpies in this update. And last but certainly not least, what you guys I'm sure have been waiting for, the child mermaid. So here we have Urchin Hyde who is our child mermaid from the trailer. We got a little sneak peek at the very end there. But with Child Mermaid Sims, basically all it is is just an extra trait that is added to mermaids in the game. So if you have a mermaid family and they have a child, if the child has inherited the mermaid life state, they will have this new trait added to them that allows them to choose their mermaid tail. I've converted both of the island living tail styles for children in this mod, so those are going to be included. But if you have downloaded custom tails from my sets that I have released, you can have the Atlantica style tail or the Down Under style tail. So we'll just give him the green markings tail for the purpose of the video. So now we'll send him out into the ocean and you can see that he has some of the options that adult mermaids have, but uh, he needs to be in his mermaid form to do this. So the best way to do that is to just send him out into the water. So once your child mermaid gets out into the water, they'll do a little spin, kind of like how adult mermaids do, and they will have their tail. And I'll just show you what happens if you change their tail while they're out in the water. So it will just automatically change when you select a new one, but you can go back and forth. You can change it every day if you want to, but uh, there you go. And while he's out here, let's just send him down to go diving. Many of the adult mermaid animations have been converted for children, so you'll be able to do all of the diving interactions and whatnot. And children actually have their own outcomes for diving, so they will be slightly different than the adult mermaids. And I just have a couple more things to show you guys, so we'll send him back onto land. As they swim into shore, you'll see that the tail kind of disappears and he becomes human again. I wanted to give this object a quick look. This doesn't come with this mod. This actually comes with a set that I released at the end of last year, but it goes very well with this mod, so I highly recommend downloading it. It is a basking rock, and adult mermaids and child mermaids can use this. If adult mermaids have the singing skill, they'll be able to practice their singing on the rock, or they can just bask. So they'll just lay out with their tail and look around and hang out and their fun needle will go up a little bit. So that's pretty much the overview of all the main points of the mod and the things that I wanted to go over and help you guys understand so that you don't have as much trouble. This last little thing that I wanted to show you is if your sim is in a hot tub or in this hot springs, you will be able to click on them 
and relax in your mermaid form. And they'll let their mermaid form out and they'll do these little animations and flick their tail around. And uh, yeah, so that's a cute little interaction that I added at the last minute that I thought would be fun for you guys. As always, thank you all so much for watching and supporting my Patreon. If you've done that, I'm so appreciative for your support that allows me to continue making content like this. Uh, the Expanded Mermaids update is available to my early release patrons and will be available for free to everyone on March 1st. Thank you all again. I hope this video was helpful. If you have any issues, concerns, or suggestions, I'd love to hear them in the comments on Patreon or over on Twitter. That being said, I'll hopefully catch you guys in the next video. Bye bye